Let's talk about Warhammer's maces and axes used in self-defense. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So first thing to make um, clear at the beginning of this is I'm talking about self-defense in historical periods. Now I've mentioned in other videos that things like Warhammers or indeed axes were very often not carried around in a civilian context. Whereas swords, um, for various reasons, sometimes were worn by people in, civil in um, uh, civilian context. They can go in a scabbard, they can be worn easily, this kind of thing. And swords are, generally speaking, I would argue, more effective against unarmoured civilian opponents. They're fully edged um, and pointed. That means that any part of this blade could disable um, a, an opponent who's not wearing armour very, very quickly and easily with minimal force. Percussive weapons, on the other hand, can be blocked more easily. Someone could just throw their arm in the way. They can be grabbed and grappled more easily. They can be wrenched out of the hand, therefore, more easily. And indeed, a blow from a, uh, a hammer, for example, or an axe, if it hits you in the head, yes, absolutely, that is bad news. That's probably going to be good night, Matt. Um, but generally speaking, uh, it's less likely to do immediately disabling blows than a sword if you're just wearing civilian clothes. However, if for some reason you were carrying around a mace or pole axe, or, um, sorry, a mace or warhammer or a um, axe or something like that in civilian life, and someone attacked you with a dagger, what might you do with it? Well, first of all, we have to assume that the thing would be in your belt, worn this way, with the head up. There are various ways that it could be worn hanging down if you had a lanyard at the end of the handle, but the problem is if you're walking, you've got a heavy pointy object swinging around and that's not generally speaking a very comfortable way of traveling uh, and having that bashing against your kneecap intermittently. Instead, if you wear it this way around, you can just stuff it down your belt and it's actually quite comfortable to wear. Um, it's a bit like a modern tool belt for um, people working on roofs and builders and, and carpenters, people like that. Um, so, let's assume that for some reason, it, it might be best to switch to the axe at this point actually, because this is, I think, the Warhammer is a specialised armoured fighting weapon. Let's be blunt about that. Blunt about that. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there. Um, but to um, cut to the cut to the point, um, the axe is something that you might more likely to be carrying around if you're a woodsman or a frontiersmen in the 18th century or this kind of thing, you know, tomahawks, small hatchets are tools as well as weapons. And absolutely, this is something you might just be carrying, walking around with worn stuffed into the belt with the blade upwards, um, or blade at the top rather. Um, now, if assuming the first thing you're going to have to do is access it, and that's pretty much true to all self-defense in any period. If you have an implement which is going to increase your chances of defending yourself against a knife attack, let's just assume the attack is with the knife, because many attacks in all periods will be with a knife, because it's one of the most common objects, and knives are everywhere. Watch out UK lawmakers, you can't get rid of knives, they're in every kitchen, in every tool shed, they're just, knives are part of life, accept it, move on. Um, but if you're attacked with a knife and you happen to have an axe on you for a legitimate legal reason or historically because there are no stupid laws which say that you can't have one on you, um, then you have to get the thing out. So with either hand, very often the hand nearest the axe is going to be the one that's easiest to access it. Now where it's going to come out is like that, isn't it? It could, if you get the hand across, you could pull it out that way. And this changes slightly the scenario. Now, I am imagining here, like some people going, Matt, why are you talking about this? And I just think it's an interesting hypothetical question to address. But indeed, many of you I know do uh, role playing games and or write books. I know there's many people contact me say that they write uh, combat scenes and books. And this is the kind of thing that I think it's interesting to test out a scenario to give you visually the kind of um, you know, scenario that might possibly happen. Now, a basic thing to think about is if you're attacked with a knife, if it's from that side, this arm is the one that's most easy to defend yourself or at least keep the person at bay for a second while you access your weapon. And therefore, the axe is gonna come out this way in the left hand. If, however, the person attacks you from that side, it's the opposite. And in that case, the defending arm is gonna be this one and you're gonna come out with the axe this way. Now, in some ways, this is better for you for a number of reasons. If the person attacks your left hand side, that means you've got your left hand to grab, deflect, push, block, whatever you need to do, punch, 
anything on this side and that means when you pull your axe out it's easier to get it into your hitting hand this is assuming you're right-handed of course um, let's just think about this as non-dominant as and dominant it doesn't really matter which is left and right and that now means you've got a defending or grappling or grabbing hand a bit like a buckler as well you can keep range keep measure with it and you've got a hitting hand that's great if you're attacked from this side it's a little bit more complicated because your dominant hand is probably going to be used for blocking and your other hand is going to be used for hitting. You should train both of course because you don't know which side you're going to get attacked from and indeed you might, say, might be saying Matt what happens if someone attacks you from behind? If someone attacks you from behind then you probably won't know until you've got a few inches of steel buried in your back okay and in that case it's going to be a situation assuming that your brain's still functioning and you're still able to move and your spine's intact um, of turning one way or the other and in this, this scenario I would suggest turning this way is always the best because again it's about turning the left shoulder towards your attacker okay so turning your left shoulder to your attacker to do something to them and getting your weapon up into your hitting hand this is again is assuming you're right-handed just flip what I'm saying if you're left-handed okay so you should perhaps if you want to train being attacked from behind practice turning this way and getting that arm out and getting your striking weapon up here now just to mention what I'm doing with the weapon when I lift it up, you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm pulling it out of my imaginary belt. I do actually have a real belt on here. Let's stuff it into my real belt. There we go. I'm wearing it. Look, I've got two hands. First thing to do, can you see that, is get your fingers, get the bottom of your hand underneath the head of the weapon. In this case, it doesn't matter whether it's a mace, an axe, a warhammer, whatever. That's a really useful junction um, to get your hand under. Okay, Get it up into a secure grip first. This is the most important thing, is to make sure your weapon is in your hand. Okay, What you don't want to do is slide the thing up with an open hand and whoop, and lose it and drop it, because now you've got no weapon and you're fumbling around on the ground while someone's stabbing you. Okay, So first thing is get the thing up and secure in your hand. Your weapon is going to come up in this way. Now, your weapon is usable at this point. Okay, so let's say my opponent is over there. Let's keep it simple for this video. We're keeping them away, okay, and we're holding an implement which is a really useful weapon already. Is it as good as a knife? Mm, debatable. I would say it's kind of equal in some ways. There are various things you can do with the axe held like this. First of all, you've got a great blocking device here, and you have to recognize if someone's trying to repeatedly stab you, one of the most important things to do is to stop them from doing that, okay? So you've got this stick out here held essentially like a dagger blade, okay? And you can now um, deflect either side, you can deflect above either way, up this way, up this way. You can deflect either side, you can push, if something's coming directly inwards, you can push that across, okay, to either side. General rule, push to the outside and you can try and grab and control the stabbing arm. Okay, obviously if they're left-handed, you're going to be pushing that way and trying to do it. Okay, so pushing a stab aside wherever it's coming in, push aside and try to get the outside of their arm and try and grab. If you get a grab on their dagger arm, dagger hand, try and grab near the wrist. That's the best point of leverage and control. And it's the smallest part of their arm that will give you the firmest grip. Okay, so grab that part of the wrist. Now, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, I'm just saying things that might happen here. Generally speaking, the most important thing is just make sure you get as few holes in your body as possible. Okay, so you're doing all of these things, but you can also fight back with the weapon held in this way. You can stab like it's a knife. Bam! Okay, now it doesn't have a point. It's not going to penetrate. However, it will cause a lot of blunt trauma, damage and injury and pain, and it will distract and it will hurt and it might even disable if you do it hard enough. Where you should be aiming? Face, okay, face and throat and neck. These are the places, so bam, 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 you can do this. But also remember, you've also got a blade in here that you can punch with, okay? You can punch with it with an ax blade quite, um, uh, quite well. Um, and you've also got points here. The points can rake downwards with the bottom one, punching with the top one. The other thing to mention is, as well as blocking with this shaft and stabbing with the end of the shaft, you've also got the ability to hook Okay, now this is a bit more complex stuff and I wouldn't necessarily advise it as a gross motor movement. Um, but say for example a stab's coming straight downwards here, you can hook the thing to the side here and that will enable you to get a moment of control onto the arm and grab onto that wrist. If you do that and then you can take the fight back to the opponent in whatever way you like. 
The other thing you can do with the axe, of course, is get it into a conventional grip. So you can use the axe absolutely in this way, but either with two hands or with one hand, you can get to that position. And once you've got the axe into the conventional striking position, you have a reach and a power advantage over the knife attacker. You can aim at their hand, their arm, their head, anything to prevent them from uh, getting stabs in on you. And I would say, generally speaking, you want to practice left and right, left and right, downwards blows, number one, number two, number one, number two, and just keep doing this kind of, kind of thing, particularly against their arm and hand as they extend it out. And if you can reach boom, into their head, because that'll be fight over for them probably. Now, how do you get from this position to this position? Well, you can do what I'm doing here. Um, but if you intend to do that and you want to do that, practice it. Okay, so start off here and all you want to do is you just want to loosen the hand a little bit, but don't open it up. Okay, so go from tight grip to loose grip and back to tight grip. So tight, loose and back. It doesn't matter if you get all to the bottom. In fact, uh, all the way to the bottom. In fact, it's better if you don't go all the way to the bottom for two reasons. Number one, if you always practice it doing, doing it right the way to the bottom, you gain extra reach. But the problem is if you go too far, you might disarm yourself. But the second reason is by going down to about here, leaving a little bit of shaft at the bottom is good for two reasons. Number one, it acts as a counterbalance. It's a bit like a pommel, okay? So having a bit of length at the back of a stick helps counterbalance the hitting end of the stick. But secondly, it's a hook. And if, some, if you swing at someone and they charge in at you, boom, and they're in here in grappling range, having that sticking out at the back means you can hit and you can hook behind joints, behind the shoulder, behind the elbow, and you can use it as a point of leverage. Okay, so that's number one way to get from here to here. And then you can start hitting with the thing. Okay, and if you don't go quite down far enough, you can always do it again to get a little bit further if you need to. But even if you just get down to there, you can start hitting and then slip it down a bit further to get more reach. Okay, that's number one way. Number two way is safer, but it means that you have to use both your hands, okay? It literally, I would advise just going to the end of the shaft with this. You can, of course, defend two-handed with the axe at this point, but go with your off hand to the bottom and then slide your dominant hand down to it. At this point, you could strike two-handed, but I would say in a defense situation, it's better to keep this hand out and able to measure distance and keep the person at hitting range. This weapon is better at hitting range than at grappling range. So therefore keeping them at hitting range is an advantage to you. And also a knife, you don't want it to get close to you. Okay, I hope that was somewhat interesting. Primarily aimed at people doing role playing and writing novels and this kind of thing. Um, but it may help you look at the ax in a slightly different way and in a slightly different context. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.